evening, everybody. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> it's Risa and Kevin from Hudson Valley Vintage. So tonight we are going to show you how to take a plain. This is actually a little mucky, but that's okay. A plain, yeah, plain garbages, whatever. Yeah, planter you can also box do this on plastic. Yep. Anything, and we're going to make it look like it's like it's stone. We're going to give it texture. And we're gonna do that by using Fusion Mineral Paints Fresco. So, um, as I said, Fresco is a texture medium. It's a powder that we, we're gonna add into the paint. And I'm gonna show you how, we're gonna show you how to do that and a couple different examples of what you can do with them. So, I actually went ahead the other day, I did these yesterday, and I put a coat of Fresco, this wooden, box so can you see the the texture on it can you see that yeah. it's got a lot of texture mm -hmm. i did actually two of them so um that's not the final step so we're going to continue working with it we're also going to start a new one so you can see exactly how we did it so i'm going to jump around a little bit tonight just for um sake of drying time when we go back to these later, you'll understand what I'm doing. So for this first one, I'm gonna paint a different color on the outside, and then we're gonna go back and do some distressing once it dries. So one of the planters that I did um, last week, the one I did last week, I, I used this color. This is from General Finishes, it's called Key West Blue. So we're actually doing these for our own home outside. We have a, a nice patio. So I, th I thought that azure is a teeny bit too dark. And... Unless you like, yeah, it's a good Bermuda color. I thought that little teapot is too light. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is on a plate, I'm gonna mix them up a little bit. And when you're mixing colors, you wanna mix in the darker color into the lighter color. If you do it the other way, if you mix the lighter color into the darker color, it's going to take you forever to mix because it's just not going to show a difference. So this one is Little Teapot, and this one is Azure. There oh, we go. I was waiting for it to go blap. I know, right? So I'm just going to take a little popsicle stick and start mixing in a little bit of my Azure. Because I feel like on its own, it's a little too dark. And again, you want to mix the darker color into the lighter color. So I'm going to just take my brush. Now, I did the fresco on this one already. So I'm just going to put a thin coat over the... Um, this is ash. The color I'm using is ash. The color that's under here. And so give them it's, it's interesting. Now that I'm putting the other color on here... That you can really see the um, the texture much more than you could before, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're gonna see the method of my madness, the method to my madness, in a minute when this dries. So for my other one, which I also use ash, I'm gonna use some goddess ashwagandha. So I would say, you know, as far as drying it, it's really gonna depend. Now this is like a grayish, this color. Um, as far as drying it, it's definitely going to take longer than a coat of paint because it's really thick. If you can let it dry on its own, I'm going to say it's going to take a couple hours. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put these aside and let them dry. And they're not going to take long because it's just paint over the fresco. It's not fresco that's drying. Okay. There we go. You can put them right here. Are they going to okay. be in the way? Yeah, just move them. Okay. My handy dandy lazy Susans. Okay, so now I have another wooden box and um, I'm gonna grab my fresco. So the fresco comes in a bag. This is a larger one, it, this is 400 grams and it also comes in a small one. And you're gonna need to do this, you're gonna need a some kind of a container. I'm just gonna use a paper cup. You're gonna need something to mix your fresco. 
and you're gonna need some paint. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you how I like to mix my fresco. So I always like to put a small layer of paint in the bottom of my container. So whether you're using a plate or a bowl or a cup, I like to just, I don't even have an inch. There's probably- Inch? Oh no, no, you've got a quarter, a, it's a quarter of an inch. I'm just covering the bottom of my cup. So, yeah. Okay, so let's see what the fresco says. Now I've used this many times, but I just want to read um, what it says to you. So it says, Fresco gives you the perfect sea-swept, weathered, worn, and rustic textured look. Fresco, um, blah, 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 telling you it's natural. But I'm going to read this to you, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. All right, <laughs> blah, no, blah, I'll read it. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Blah, 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 <laughs> yada, yada, yada. The end. <laughs> Fresco is 100% natural and contains no VOCs. Depending on your mix and application, you will get a different end result. Follow below for the look you want to achieve. Layer and continue until your desired effect is achieved. So for a textured look, which is what we're going for, mix one part fresco to two parts paint. Um, for a matte chalky finish. So fusion is not a chalk paint, but let's say you wanted a chalk paint look. You want to dull it up. Dull it up, yep. matte it up. You could use this. So you would add two tablespoons of fresco to one pint of paint. So it's not much at all. Just enough to just enough to dry the paint out a bit. Right. So I've got my little bit of paint in here. It does not come with a tablespoon, but I I like to have one on hand. So you won't, you're going to want something to measure unless you're I'm not really measuring, I'm just kind of winging it. But um blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. So I've got two tablespoons of my fresco in there. And now I'm gonna put a little bit more paint. Just a little bit. So the next thing I'm gonna do is mix up my mixture. And I don't have enough paint. It is very, very, very fresco-y. So now my tech now my fresco is completely covered by my pebble. Here's the thing. <clears throat> if you keep mixing it, mm -hmm. you're going to thin it out. Yeah. Once you get the result that you want, stop, stop. mixing. Yep. So now I'm going to start and I'm just going to apply it right onto my, to my piece. And I'm going to just, and you can, you can blop it on, you can put it on. Here's another thing. If you brush it on and keep brushing it, you're gonna, you're gonna smooth it right out. You're gonna smooth it out. So just hit it once and let so her get it on there and and let and if it. You, and if you want lumps, go back in and yeah. da dab the brush. You know. So you, know, you guys noticing that right I'm on. just kind of getting it on there. Dabbing I'm not, it on. I'm, I'm not smoothing it out in any mm -hmm. way. I have seen people use this on furniture, so you might not want to use this on a top, like a tabletop or some or a dresser top. But wouldn't it be cool, like on the sides? So as I said, I am just kind of dabbing it on. I'm not going crazy with it. It's actually almost like an oatmeal consistency. So when you're using Fresco, I don't generally like to use my best brush only because if I don't clean it right away, you know, I might ruin it. I mean, it it's, it's water-based, it washes out. It's it, an inexpensive yeah. brush. Definitely don't want to leave it in your brush for too long. That, that's really true of the paint as well. Okay, so let me just go over since make sure I've got everything. Let me make sure I have, I think I do. So, so you can see it on the light color because you get shadows. Yeah. Whereas on the on the black you couldn't yeah. you couldn't you couldn't see it very well. So you don't have to dry that. Okay. So that's all there is to mixing and applying the fresco. If you want just a little bit of texture, not as heavy as we used, then you're going to use less. Don't and you know, it, here's the thing know. about fre mixing fresco, you can always go back and forth. So if you've mixed up your mixture and you start painting it and you're like, you know what, this is too thin, it's not enough, add a little more powder to your mix. If, if 
if it's, if too, it's thick, too thick, then a little more pink. More Just pink. don't mix too much. Or you'll have you'll you'll end up with a half a gallon of Fresco. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, on this one, it's a little thicker on this side than it is on the other side. So I'm going to show you now what I'm going to do. So I got a couple of 220 grit sandpaper. So 220 grit is very fine. With sandpaper, the higher the number, the finer the grit. So what I'm going to do is just lightly sand. The 220 doesn't do a lot. No, I actually think I'm going to go up to a higher number, a lower number. So this is 100. Now, <clears throat> don't I'm not don't just jump in and start using 100 right away. Use the use the finer grit first. Now, you'll notice that I do have some white spots. That's the fresco itself um, after it dries. But and that's okay. It gives a really cool look. It does. <clears throat> So with the distressing, you know, do as much or as little as you want. The other thing you can do with the fresco, and I did a little bit of it here, is add your, add your contrasting color over it in a little bit of a dry brush. That way um, you can see the, the fresco underneath. So see how you can see now that the ash is coming through? Can you see here, I kind of applied it in like a wavy pattern. Can mm. they see that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. I mean, that really... Yes, yeah, so you could put it on like a, like scallops. Yeah. You could, you could, you do could it trowel however, it on any way you like and you really want. get cool with it. Yeah, yeah. I got jiggy with it. I got jiggy with my fresco. Look at this side. I mean, wouldn't that look great? Yeah, you could you could also trowel it like up wouldn't and down, this, up and down. Wouldn't this look great on like the sides of the table or yep. something? That would look fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do it. It just gives you such a rustic, fun yeah. look. And we're talking about planters, but you could actually, you could take the entire front of, let's say a, a, a dresser or a small buffet and close the doors and fresco the whole front yep. and really give it a really give it a wild you know great look to it and you wouldn't want to do the top just remember nope that. not the top so now we have our other one that we painted over the ash with goddess ashwagandha Okay, so this one again is I, I did the fresco in ash from Fusion Mineral Paint. Um, once it dried, I painted it with Goddess Ashwagandha, and I just distressed it. Okay, so this particular glaze is from Paint Couture, and it is called Weathered Wood, and I'm going to apply some. So I'm going to put weathered wood on the white, and then we're going to put, maybe we'll put stardust on this one. Okay. Okay. So this is what the weathered wood looks like. It's a, it's a gray. And again, this is from Paint Couture. It's a glaze. And I'm going to apply it with a synthetic brush. Why don't you follow? And I'm just going to brush this on and you want to make sure you get it into all those details so this is just gonna the glaze is just gonna give it an extra dimension and here's the other thing paint couture's glazes also have a built-in top coat so if you're putting this outside it'll give it a little extra layer of protection you don't need to you don't need a ton of it that makes it even show up even more it does it's gonna Okay, so now I'm going to take my um, 
my t-shirt. You just want to make sure you're using something that's lint free because you wouldn't want to start adding lint onto this. And um, I'm just going to wipe back a little bit of the excess, just a little bit, not too much. Oh, I love this look. I mean, now you can see that 15 feet away. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful. And you know, some glazes you need to like let them sit for like half an hour and with paint couture, it's nice and thick. You don't need to do that. You can wipe it back um, pretty much right away. And unlike paint, it is gonna take a little bit more time to dry. I think this is my last side. And you know what, if you wiped back too much, like I sometimes do, throw on a little bit more. Here we go. So now we've added another element of the glaze. I love this. This is like perfect, I think. Looks amazing. Okay, so this was just plain wood before we started with it. So now we're gonna take another um, glaze from Paint Couture. This one is zinc. Darker. It's darker, darker than the weathered wood. But this is a darker color. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. You can handle it. Now, if you're not sure how it's gonna look, you can always test it on a board or something. All right, so um, I've got a clean brush and I'm going to start applying So now I'm gonna um, now, now I'm gonna read all. Yeah. So this is I don't know if Kevin showed you this. So let's see. So this is the second one I did. Um, oh boy, that's really close. So this one, it's almost too close. Is that better? No, they like the close up. Yeah, yeah, but that's good too. So this is, so this one, I, I mixed the fresco with with ash, with Fusion Mineral Paints yep. ash. Um, I did a little bit of a pattern on this side, not so much on the other side. And I don't know if you can see the metallic, I think it, you'll it's see- It's hard to see because it's shiny. Yeah, it's you're gonna still see wet. it more when wet. it, you're gonna yeah. see more of it when it dries. So, um, that's pretty much all there is to fresco and it like we said before it's a great way to transform your outside flower pot all right guys we'll see you um in a little while otherwise i'll see you on friday otherwise i'll see you next wednesday at six o'clock all right if you watch this later post any questions or comments in the comments and feel free to share this on your page if you have anybody that you think would yeah like to spruce up their planters or use fresco Take care.